So I'm putting my ACL leg on the outside, right? Because I mean, because I had a hip hip drop uh, when I was doing the forward heel touch, and you assessed it that way as a clinician. So. I want to help them work on that. I want to help them to engage your glute meat so they understand like this is what it should be doing so that you don't have the hip drop. Because we know that if, if, that, if that stays persistent, that can cause, potentially lead to anterior knee pain or contribute to that at least. Today I'm going over one of my favorite closed chain glute meat exercises. Um, I posted an exercise breakdown of the Captain Morgan before, but I'm actually gonna post, this video is gonna be more of a regression of a more Captain Morgan isometric and kind of when you would utilize it um, in the overall spectrum of ACL rehab. Uh, in my opinion, I think this exercise can actually be utilized a little bit earlier in rehab because if you think about the Captain Morgan, it does require a good amount of loaded knee flexion, right? It's almost like a skater where they, they drop down, try and get that glute meat going. Some people eat with even like, the, let's say a patella tendon graft might not tolerate that load very well. So, you know, that exercise might not be great for that point in time. And we're talking potentially you can try this at, I've done it as early as six weeks post-op um, for people who can tolerate it because all you're really doing is kind of standing. Um, so I'm going to first talk about like when I feel like it will be, it will be um, appropriate to incorporate something like this, uh, which I do feel like honestly every single ACL could utilize, but what I'm exactly looking for in order for you as a clinician to understand, but also the patient to understand why we're utilizing this exercise, which is always something I wanna try and encourage is for every patient to understand the why behind every single exercise. Um, so I'm gonna utilize these pads right here to kind of show you. So the forward heel touch is a very commonly, commonly uh, incorporate exercise to try and work on eccentric quad strength, whether you're doing a forward step down or a lateral step down. Um, but from my experience, a lot of patients really lack hip control during that point in time, whether it's due to compensating for, for quad weakness or just because their hip is also uh, weak from surgery, which it, it could, I, I think, definitely be both. So in this example, I'm gonna utilize these pads to show you, and I'm gonna face away from the camera so you can kind of see what I'm looking at. So when I watch them do a heel touch, I'm obviously looking for I'm looking at the trunk, kind of broken down, broken this down in other, other videos before. I'm looking at their trunk, um, I'm looking at their hip, I'm looking at their knee, right? I'm looking if their knee is able to come forward, are they comfortable loading their quads, um, slash can their, then their, can their knee tolerate it? I'm also looking to see if there's excessive trunk flexion to see if they're trying to offload the quads. Lastly, I'm looking to see if their hip has some sort of hip drop on the opposite side, telling me that their glute med on that side is weaker, right? Because we know the glute med controls the same side knee and the opposite hip when you're performing a single leg motion. So if I face away from the camera, let's say my right, my, let's say my left one is my healthy side, right? And let's say they're going through a heel touch, they're able to, I'm looking for their, specifically their hip level. Sometimes I might tell them to tuck in their pants so they can, you can see their pant line. And you should be able to see them maintain, you know, a good hip control motion staying level. What I'm looking at sometimes when they go to the ACL side, a lot of times when they start initiating that downward motion, they will start to drop, right? And even though it looks like I'm exaggerating, I have seen it to this level before. So if this is, if this is dropping, what that means is, it either means this quad is weaker or this hip, is this glute meat is not doing its job in pulling up the opposite hip. Because again, theoretically, if this hip was doing its job, right, if this glute me was doing its job, I should be able to maintain this level here. And it shouldn't be like that. Okay, so that's where this Captain Morgan exercise really comes into play. I'm gonna talk about the basic level of it, how I teach it, and then I'm gonna go into the progression of it. So from here, When you perform the Captain Morgan, right, you're trying to work on the outside hip is what you're focused on. And when you're doing this, I'm pushing into the ball, okay? So when I'm standing here, I'm pushing into the ball, okay? So when I'm doing that is my right knee is pushing into the ball. I'm actually going to change the camera angle, so forgive me for a second. Okay, so I'm working on the outside hip. Okay, so just for demonstration purposes, I know for the, for the when I was doing the forward heel touch, I was using my right leg. For now, my left leg is my ACL leg. 
So I'm putting my ACL leg on the outside, right? Because I mean, because I had a hip hip drop uh, when I was doing the forward heel touch, and you assessed it that way as a clinician. So. I want to help them work on that. I want to help them to engage your glute meat so they understand like this is what it should be doing so that you don't have the hip drop. Because we know that if, if, that, if that stays persistent, that can cause, potentially lead to anterior knee pain or contribute to that at least. So when you're here, right, basic standing is that I want this ball right at the knee level. Okay, so when I'm bending, that ball should stay against the wall because this knee outside, sorry, the inside knee is keeping the ball against the wall. And I've talked to you about how the Captain Morgan requires you to, to go up and down, but for this exercise, it's a regression, so we're only gonna do purely an isometric. So I actually like to start the ball a little bit higher, and I will hold it here, and I will let them hold on for balance, especially if you're doing this for the first time. I want a very slight knee flexion. I'm really not bending that low, right? I have a very, very slight knee flexion. Again, this is, this is when you're first starting this exercise. So I'm using the wall for balance. I have a very small knee flexion. And for now, all I want them to do is figure out if they can even feel their glute med. Okay, so I want them maybe a little bit more weight shifted back on this heel. I want this ball to be pushing into the wall. I do not want them to be leaning, which is a typical compensation. Okay, so they should be really stacked up on this outside leg. And before I even go any further, I just want them to be like, can you feel your glute med? And again, I encourage you guys to try this out for yourselves. That way, the better you understand it, the better you can teach it. So right now, I feel my glute med really firing. And what I want them to do potentially, if they can handle it, I might cue them to really hike their right hip, pull it up even higher, and that gets your glute meat even more, right? Because like I talked about, if that glute meat isn't working, it pulls it, your hip is going to drop. So I'm actively trying to activate that muscle to pull it upward, right? So for here, I'm, again, I'm pulling upward and you should hopefully see that ball slide up a little higher. And I'm, I just have them hold and we are just holding for about 15 to 20 seconds. And usually they'll tell you that it burns a lot. And you might even see their, their hip, everything shaking a lot, okay? So that's a general breakdown of how I like to teach this exercise. This is like kind of level one. Let's say you try for a couple weeks, they start to get stronger and start to feel better with it. And then you wanna increase it and by, by making it a little bit harder. So what I like to do is actually add a weight. So I like to offload it. Again, we're trying to work on a unilateral load on the, on the outside. So if I'm trying to work on this glute med, I want to load the inside even more. So if I'm here, I might get back into the exact same position. I just want them to hold it here. And you should feel that glute med fire even more. Okay? It's as simple as that. 15 to 20 second holds. I like to work this into a specific block that I'm, that, I'm, that I'm incorporating. And maybe you pair this with the heel touch if they're really struggling with the heel touch. Even with the heel touch, I would typically start with the lateral heel touch because that's usually a little bit easier, more tolerable. And then you kind of pull them back into um, work on this glute meat to help them understand like what you're trying to accomplish is like we don't want your hip to drop when you're doing a basic um, heel touch. And again, maybe you will see hip drops when you get into deeper ranges and things like that. For me, I really want to see some symmetry between the two sides. So if you're seeing that instant hip drop when they're doing the, when they're doing a forward heel touch, you know that that glute meat isn't doing what we want it to do. Um, and that's where this exercise fairly early on again, um, is perfectly safe to do. And I think is really great before you progress into the full Captain Morgan. Um, so yeah, I just want to do a quick little breakdown of this exercise and uh, hopefully you guys found this video helpful. Thank you for watching today's video. Please feel free to like and subscribe and share it on your social media platforms. If you're interested, I have started an ACL mastermind group, which is a growing library of content centered around ACL rehab. It has exercises ranging from immediate post-op to late stage sports specific movements and everything in between. It's a growing library and currently holds over 250 videos. There's content centered around assessments, movement breakdowns, exercise breakdowns, case studies, and a whole lot more. You also gain access to a private forum where you can engage with like-minded people, ask questions, share research articles, and share resources. If you're interested, please feel free to click the link below. Thank you for watching.